Memorial Dube has been appointed chairperson of SASOL. The Petrochemicals Group says it is confident she will provide the necessary direction and leadership as the company intensifies its focus on progressing a sustainable future business. Dube's appointment comes as Sasol has committed to reduce greenhouse gases by 30% by 2030 and reach net zero emissions by 2050. African Rainbow Capital Investments has delivered an improved year-end performance. It's posted a near 9% rise in intrinsic net asset value per share. Arc says its diverse investment portfolio has shown remarkable resilience against this challenging macroeconomic environment. It's added that one of the most pleasing aspects of these results has been the strong progress made at several of its early stage assets, with both Time Bank and Line Booker achieving a break even. Metrofile's annual profits nearly halved. The document and storage management specialist has reported a 49% drop in headline earnings. It's pointed to low volume growth across the business and a challenging trading environment. Metrofile has declared a final dividend of 7 cents. That takes the payout for the year to 14 cents, which is 22% lower than the prior period. Despite the performance, Metrofile is optimistic. It expects the next financial year to be better and says prospects for a recovery in earnings are good because its strategic initiatives are already showing results. High official sales have given Oceana's U.S. operations a boost. The firm's released an 11-month trading update, saying that increase, along with record dollar prices, saw Daybrook continue to build on a strong first-half performance. But Oceana's added that its results were tempered by a disappointing performance by its SA and Namibian horse mackerel businesses. The fishing group is set to open its books in November. Nepi Rock Castle is looking to grow its portfolio. The group which owns premier shopping, uh, shopping centers in Central and Eastern Europe is in talks to acquire another shopping center in Poland. Nepi says the property has experienced outstanding operational performance and is well positioned for future growth. The group already owns over 10 assets in the country. In international news, the Biden administration recently locked in, a st locked in a steep tariff hikes in a Chinese imports, including a 100% duty on electric vehicles, and with many beginning as soon as September 27th. For more detail, let's take a look at this report. The Biden administration on a locked in steep tariff hikes on Chinese imports, including a 100% duty on electric vehicles. Top White House economic advisor Lael Brainerd told Reuters the decision was made to strengthen domestic production of EVs and diversify away from China's dominant state-funded supply chain. Many of the tariffs go into effect as soon as September 27th. They include a 100 percent duty on Chinese EVs, 50 percent on solar cells, and 25 percent on steel, aluminum, EV batteries and key minerals. The guidelines, published in a memo from the Office of the United States Trade Representative, but first reviewed by Reuters, also show a 50 percent duty on Chinese semiconductor chips that will start in 2025. China has vowed to retaliate against what it has called bullying tariff hikes and argued that its EV industry's success is due to innovation and not support from the Chinese government. The higher tariffs take effect as Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump, both court voters in auto and steel producing states, trying to position themselves as tough on China ahead of the November presidential election. Trump has vowed to impose 60 percent tariffs on all Chinese imports. A spokesperson for China's embassy in Washington did not immediately respond to a request for comment. And Hui Kayan, the chairman of China Evergrande, the company at the center of the country's uh, property sector crisis, has been uh, moved to a special detention center in Shenzhen. Let's take a look at this report for more. The whereabouts of China Evergrande's chairman has been publicly unknown for the last year. Now, two sources have exclusively told Reuters Hui Kai Yan has been moved to a special detention centre in Shenzhen. The 65-year-old has not been seen in public since he was taken away by Chinese authorities a year ago. 
Evergrande was at the centre of the country's property sector crisis and ordered into liquidation in January. Chinese regulators found its key unit had inflated earnings and committed securities fraud. Hui, who was once China's richest man, was fined $6.6 million in March and banned from the securities market for life. He is not known to have been formally charged with any crimes and it's unclear how long he will remain in detention or whether he will be tried or set free. Chinese authorities have detained many former high-flying business executives. Some have remained in detention for years with little or no information about their fate. One source said Hui was initially under house surveillance in Beijing after his arrest. Another source added he was transferred to Shenzhen a few months ago to allow him to more easily communicate with top Evergrande executives. Chinese authorities did not respond to Reuters' requests for comment. Neither did Hengda Real Estate, Evergrande's main unit. The company has defaulted on most of its $300 billion liability since 2021. Its problems have been emblematic of China's property sector struggles that have dragged on economic growth. Music